Just the other day, I saw the 2024 Olympic champion race against one of the biggest streamers in the world on a live broadcast to over 100,000 people. This was a meeting of two completely different worlds, and the result was beyond entertaining. At the start, I Show Speed got a decent jump on the gun, with Noah Lyles losing maybe half of a step. But then, as many clearly thought would happen, Lyles then proceeded to drop the hammer, and he passed Speed with ease, and he took this victory by a pretty solid margin, nothing huge, but he even strutted his way across the finish line in first place. This 50 meter exhibition was a clear display at how Olympic speed is just a different echelon of running. And this got me thinking, what would this race have looked like if say Fred Curley were to have been competing? Or perhaps Christian Coleman? Or perhaps a prime Su Bing Tian who holds the fastest opening 60 meters of all time? This 50 race was half the distance as to what the Olympians are required to run in the primary event that is the 100 meters, the highlight race during every Olympics that requires not just a good start, but world-class top speed if you're looking for the gold medal. In reviewing this rare exhibition kind of race, blending the running world with the streaming world, it got me thinking. How exactly has sprinting evolved over the past 15 or 20 years? And what would other athletes look like if they were in fact on the starting line with iShow Speed and Noah Lyles? At this year's World Indoor Championships, we saw Noah Lyles competing in the Indoor 60 for the very first time, and he was competing against the world record holder in this event, Christian Coleman. This race was hyped up like crazy, as these two have completely different racing styles. But ultimately, Coleman took the win in 6.41, outlasting Lyles who finished in second in 6.44. Coleman is just such an explosive, powerful starter, and it is always a challenge to catch him over the 60. And even though 6.41 seconds is absolutely blazing, you might be surprised to learn that in this year's Olympic Games, the 60 meter times en route to the 100 meter finishes were practically right at this threshold. Here are the splits from every single athlete in the Olympic finals through the 60. Incredibly, the slowest opening 60 was 6.46, achieved by both Kenny Benarek and Akani Sambine. But in front of these two were Taboho, Noah Lyles, Oblique Seville, and then at the very top were Keyshane Thompson and Fred Curley, who both split 6.41 seconds in these Paris games. This kind of speed was just ridiculous, and the depth of this 100 was truly historic. En route to a 100, they ran the exact same time that Coleman clocked to win the world indoors. But this is really only a tiny piece to the floodgates that have been opened to 60 meter sprinting, because if we look to the semifinals, both Oblique Seville and Keyshane Thompson actually ran faster, as they both achieved times of 6.40 en route to their semifinal runs. To place high in any race, you certainly need to be able to get out of the blocks quick. And in 2024, the demand for this kind of skill seems to be at an all-time high. Here's a chart taking a look at the fastest 60-meter clockings in the world, dating all the way back to 2010. For the past 15 years, we can see that overall, a quicker downward trend does seem to be taking place. In the mid-2010s, we saw consistent times under 6.5, and then come 2018, Christian Coleman morphed into a starting god with his new world record of 6.34, and since this time, it has been consistently under 6.45, with 6.41 holding as the world's fastest time for the past two seasons. This chart tells a bigger story as to what is required to be a world-class sprinter. But if we take it one step further and dig a little bit deeper, we can take the average of the top 10 fastest times every year over the 60 meters, and our new graph looks like this. For this comparison, these two have similar overall trends. There's a dip in 2018, they follow a similar trend for the past 15 years. But what is notable is what has been happening for the past three seasons, because for 2022, 2023, and in 2024, the top 10 average times are under 6.5, meaning that more and more people are truly getting faster. Now it's one thing to get a solid 60 time during the indoor season, where the 60 meters is a big part of an indoor campaign for sprinting. 
But what is even more important to solidify yourself as a sprinting legend is the ability to execute this speed come the outdoor season. In the 2021 Olympic Games, Su Bingtian from China ran the fastest 60 split of all time en route to a 100 meter dash, achieving a mind bending time of 6.29. This opening speed should not be possible, but this is what it looks like to have the fastest start in track and field history. And oh yeah, this guy right here, he was the Olympic champ from Tokyo, Marcel Jacobs, and he was getting dropped like a middle schooler over the opening stages against Su Bing Tian. This ability to run a quick 60 is actually becoming all the more common, and we saw this from a few key athletes in 2024. We saw Fred Curley run a time of 6.41 in the Olympics, despite only holding an indoor time of 6.55. And we also saw Litsili Taboho achieve a split of 6.41 as well, running this crazy opening 60 in Rome, Italy, tying none other than Christian Coleman through 60. And Taboho is not known as a quick starter, and yet he got out of the blocks like this. The opening stages of any sprinting race are a crucial part of finding success, and it potentially could make or break your overall performance. But here is the harsh reality of shorter sprinting. This is only half the battle. When it comes to the all-time greats in the 100, they all have one thing in common, and that's that they can close over their final moments like a freight train. When Noah raced I show speed, we only got a glimpse at what is required to be a world-class athlete come the Olympics. And while Noah has officially become one of the 10 fastest 60 meter athletes to ever compete, his start is without question the weakest part of his race. If this 50 meter exhibition had doubled in length, it would have been no contest by any measure. I already thought I show speed did a pretty solid job at sticking with Lyles for as long as he did. And honestly, I think he might have some decent sprinting potential if he focused solely on running. But competing against Lyles in the 100 is truly dangerous, because he knows how to close and he knows how to execute a finish. The demands of sprinting over the past decade and a half have changed quite drastically. Starting has become more of a precision game, the ability to get out of the blocks and hold your position is crucial. But one aspect of sprinting has remained constant. And that's that if you truly want to be one of the all-time greats, you have to close. Remember Su Bing Chan's race earlier, the Tokyo Olympic semifinal, where he opened his first 60 in 6.29? Well, he set the Asian record in that race at 9.83, an impressive time by any measure. But when we compare this 6.29 to the second fastest opening in history, we can see that this time comes from none other than Usain Bolt, who achieved a time of 6.31 in 2009. And compared to Su Bing Chan's 9.83, Bolt ran a 9.58, meaning that he gapped Bing Tian by more than two tenths over the final 40 meters, showcasing the true importance of hitting top speed and maintaining your top speed. At the current rate of our improvements, it is entirely possible that more and more athletes are soon set to run under 6.4, and moving into the late 2020s or even the 2030s, perhaps we will see someone with an amazing start and also impressive top speed, because that is the only way that someone can even challenge Usain Bolt's world record. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.